Hi all, I have another fascinating game to show you of Leela Chess today against Xyphos, which means double-edged sword by the way. Not double-edged as in it's very easy to stab yourself, but a leaf-shaped sword, which is good for both cutting and thrusting apparently, if you check on wiki for Xyphos. It's a Greek word and it was used uh, in Greek uh, battles. So d4 from Leela, knight f6. Uh, from Xyphos, knight f3, e6, so good so far, it's all pretty standard stuff. Here though, after c5, we already get a revolutionary kind of new move, which has rarely been seen in top level over the board chess, yeah, at this position, believe it or not, move 4, which makes this game very theoretically interesting, in my, in my view. Uh, so the usual move is, for example, e3. This is a usual kind of attacking position, a bit like the London system with the bishop on g5, Torre attack style. And also c3 just transposing into that same similar setup. It looks a very nice safe setup for white. So why take the risk with anything else? But Leela decides to play d5, a very interesting pawn sacrifice. e takes, e3 fixing down against d4. So that's a target on d5, bishop e7, knight c3, black castles. Now, knight c6 has been seen before. Actually, there is one stem game here. Uh, the, um, Zagnids against Maris uh, in Fusion 2006, which ended in a win for white with knight c6. Uh, so if you want to check out that in the pinned comment. But... Uh, here, yeah, castling was played, and we have knight takes d5, d6. There's no tactical vulnerability to exploit here. Knight takes d5 does put a lot of pressure on the bishop, and if yeah, white wants to lose a piece here, then bishop takes knight takes. Uh, but if white wants to play normally, then queen takes d5 actually protects the bishop on g5 here. After bishop takes knight takes, white has a nice advantage here. Uh, for example, this position can get quite nice with d6 pressure, for example. So uh, black played d6. We have bishop takes, bishop takes, and now blunting out the c3 bishop. So voluntarily giving up the dark square bishop. Is that double-edged <laughs> against Xyphos? Actually, could it hurt white giving up the dark square bishop here? Well, you'll notice these pawns on dark squares uh, are keeping the bishop at bay now g6 and in fact Lilo uses the opportunity for this nice central knight to kind of form the basis for attacking the opponent's king directly here with h4 there's no with a knight on f6 you might have thought h5 is discouraged but there does seem to be an immediate idea of h5 now to try and activate this rook h6 is played now this often forms a good reaction to close up the position you know if h5 here then perhaps g5 is very sensible keeping this rook locked up by its own pawn so uh, an alternative bishop g7 allowing the rook to be more active is a bad idea it seems here for example white is getting a very very nice position with a small edge so h6 we have queen d2 Knight c6, rook d1, as though pressure has been built on d6 as high priority. Bishop d7, now knight f4, bishop g4. Uh, on a move like a5 as an example, bishop c4 actually threatens and knight takes g6. Some issues to be aware of uh, if black doesn't do anything too constructive. But bishop g4, and now bishop e2, the more modest bishop e2 is encouraged. Because on bishop c4 here... Actually, there's knight e5, and say knight takes, this is a sharp line, which just favours, if anyone's better, it's going to be black, it's about even. Uh, if we look at this again with queen a5, white's okay there, but yeah. Um, and, uh, okay, so knight e5, if, yeah, bishop e2 might be the best. Uh, so anyway, bishop e2 immediately, queen a5. Now queen d5 actually technically does <laughs> protect this pawn. You might have thought this, this 
queen was after this a2 pawn here in fact let's just check out the nuances of this position if white just castled uh for example here this position uh looks okay but let's say one side goes a bit crazy with taking here then rook a1 and rook a3 is nasty or is it no it's not because queen b6 but there, there is a variation which is nasty uh, queen c2 might be preparing rook a1 but black in time has bishop f5 and yeah there's some exotic variations like this <laughs> which end up being about equal so um, if we look at this again with rook fe1 here and instead of rook fe8 here this position is actually dangerous for black to take there because now there's rook a3 here and the queen uh, is in big trouble here because in this position the rook uh, means that the queen has no fleeing after knight d5 so queen b6 knight d5 the queen is trapped here so yeah some interesting variations behind the scenes so queen d5 queen b6 now looking to attack b2 it seems uh, on knight e7 the queen can go back to c4 for example this is okay where white has a small edge so queen b6 we have rook d2 which does seem to just officially protect that pawn you might think there's an idea of knight takes g6 here it doesn't really work at all because of bishop e6 that's kind of refuting the thing after this sequence for example yeah this white's in big trouble here if white has to give up a piece and go back to this scenario black can just take there actually and be better here very sharp tactical line so uh, we have rook d2 rook a d8 queen c4 bishop f5 there is actually a big threat here of knight d5 which hits the bishop and also hits the queen just to put that on the board you know if a6 uh, knight d5 and then just queen takes g4 so bishop f5 gets the bishop out of the attack potential knight d5 hitting the queen queen a5 white castles bishop e6 pinning the knight a4 we have rook d7 rook f d1 rook d8 i mean queen d8 pardon me queen f4 rook e8 so it seems pretty harmonious here for white and leader plays now on the queen side with b4 so this pawn is uh protected by the knight at the moment and uh d6 is a target so black doesn't play here bishop takes because this position there's actually b takes with that enormous pin on d7 and this ends up being very nice for white so black can't do something on c3 here but rather plays a5 uh, another thing to think about here if black doesn't react on the queen side just as a fictional scenario is actually white ends up doing this kind of torture of c6 with a6 undermining the knight on c6 with a big advantage so black reacts with a5 that's actually taken so this is fragmenting in a technical sense white's queen side pawns but the upside is this bishop now is getting a very nice square pinning the knight and now it's here that white commits to e4 uh, so we have queen a5 it's a very tricky position it seems as though black is kind of tied down in a sort of bind here rook d3 the queen just goes back it seems aimless play already from xiphos uh, here you might think let's, let's just explore the, the scenery c4 here bishop takes e takes and we see that nasty pin anytime there's a capture on d5 then this is just going to be favorable to white with the, the rooks being skewered so queen d8 black doesn't seem to be doing too much so in this position now Lila gets aggressive what would you play which is a, an aggressive move but 
you have to see that you have to say that the uh, the pieces look optimal and very harmonious as a basis for this aggression so white play five seconds okay g4 yeah the pieces seem in totally ideal places the queen and knight are coordinating on f6 so actually one idea of this looks as though the g5 intuitively to reinforce again f6 so that becomes a great square of interest here uh, potentially we have rook f8 uh, now g5 yeah sealing that f6 square it seems uh, now hg and now queen takes g5 yeah queen takes g5 not minding the exchange of queens we have rook e8 on queen takes g5 check here this is very nice to get a form pawn on f6 funny enough uh, it's very very dangerous for example this scenario where is is pretty disastrous for black as an example uh, in fact yeah that's just one example variation it's it just looks very horrible to to have that sort of thing happening so we have rookie eight uh, King g2 anyway as if there are operations now underway for the rooks either this rook coming here or there or there or g3 for h5 yeah I mean the bishops covering um h3 here but uh, okay we have rook f8 now the queen drops back to g3 eyeing potentially d6 as well rook e8 knight g5 which makes way for this f pawn battering ram which is becoming like a great theme of Lena. she's really preparing to batter down the black king side knight e5 uh, on bishop takes here again we've got this theme of the rooks being skewered so anytime that happens you know the rooks are just skewered white winning the exchange so there's no point doing that knight e5 rook d2 uh, so actually a rook was offered here actually and, and it, it's not it's actually quite bad for black this position for knight e5 to be even considered because actually it turns out bishop takes d7 is is a nice advantage for white already so so white's already in a great uh, position if this really is uh, what black wants to do knight e5 essentially um so the rook just drops back there which is even stronger just keeps the pressure on because Lula just wants to smash the king side forget about material and the knight just goes back so Xiphos again is just aimless helpless and repeating moves with absolutely no evident plan it seems except to be passive and wait for this demolition of the king side to happen f4 the demolition is in progress we have bishop h6 on uh, bishop takes d5 it might actually be strongest to play rook takes by the way here this position is pretty devastating uh, so bishop h6 um, as an alternative rook f8 let's say black doesn't play that then then white is going to peel things like this or uh, let's say if white wants to be sadistic even can be like this even stronger attacking the king directly and this is a, a really nice behind the scenes tactic by the way with check and then check here picking up the queen so there's a lot of nasty stuff if black doesn't do anything so bishop h6 i guess is trying to discourage h5 which is still a strong move anyway but it was trying to discourage it we have rook f2 okay so here bishop g7 and now f5 yeah the battering of black's king side is occurring also h5 is is very dangerous for example like this yeah there's there's a wealth of different ways to attack black here this position is very nice as well but f5 was played takes king h1 just getting away for the g file to be made use of potentially yeah this is starting to be extremely precarious for the black king safety rook takes f5 so both rooks are having a whirl of the time and there's an imminent h6 now so this is actually totally busted now for black <clears throat> we see the move f6 it's a horrible move to have to play but if king h8 
then white can just choose to take the rook here and this is obviously very good uh, as another example this is a very good attacking scheme just winning the bishop <coughs> uh, this is a nice cute checkmating stuff okay so uh, f6 we have knight e6 it's all over really by the shouting rook takes e6 is played the knight is attacking the queen and the bishop and the rook uh, so yeah the exchange is given up here and it's all over after h6 yeah black is just shedding material now it's just totally yeah just hugely material down a whole rook down for what exactly not much in fact losing some pawns now and the end is uh, uh, near basically so the rooks double here we've got an outside pass pawn now to push the bishops controlling this square anyway and these games are played to the death so let's see it played out does Leela troll too much not really not on this occasion so checkmate uh, so the significance of this game it seems to me that there was an innovative early pawn sacrifice in this game which is very far from what is frequently played so it is an unusual game actually and as a basis for attacking the king getting big control over the position uh, when the pieces were optimal then pushing the pawns on the king side so it's, it seems simply to get key squares open up lines generally batter down the opponent's king side so if you enjoyed this great King's Crushing video as much as me, please click on the top left box, which should appear soon, to become a member at chessbowl.net. That has my reference code 1053. You can play other YouTubers. You can also check the YouTube analysis of this game and other games from the improved menu learn from the Masters and YouTube order button. Okay, comments, questions, like, share, subscribes with the notification bell. Really appreciated. Thanks so much.